Hi everyone, it's Hope Yoder with Embellish, and I have a Embellish Maker software video for you. But before that, great news! There's two free updates for Embellish Maker software. I've already made a video for the free Mylar, but now the 3D Texture Fabric Decorator tool. And for anybody watching this video, if you go to rnk-embellish.com, you'll find a free trial of the software. So let me just show you a couple images of, um, this is the Mylar, and there's another video on the free Mylar update. But what I wanna show you is, we'll zoom in here. Do you see this really cool stitching right here? All right, see all of that going around the borders? Well, that's the new 3D fabric decorator. So you can see it here, and then you can see it on the back of this little sample we made to show at our events. You've got motif stitching, you've got stippling, and you've got this really cool wave effect. So I use this on a sample that I'm making for an event that I'm teaching this fall and I had a stocking outline and I wanted to decorate it with just some quilting stitches so I chose a wave stitch and let's see I've got another picture somewhere here uh, on there we go and let's see if I can show you there we go here is another picture of the stocking so you can see this stocking and here's a picture of me uh, sewing it out so what you can see in this picture is you can see the stocking outline but I just made a rectangle and I pre quilted it before I started laying down all of my other stitches so let's get started. Let me go to Embellish Maker software and let's show you the tool, where it is, and how to use it. So I am in Embellish Maker software. I'm going to open a new page and then I'm going to come under Create. And you're used to the Emboss Designer, but now we have another Auto 3D Fabric Texture tool. So we're going to open this up and I want to explain what this tool is and let me zoom in so you can see this a lot bigger. So this is a wizard and it's going to let you do a rectangle or a square shape. So you can enter in, um, first of all if you want to work in inches, we can work in inches or metric. So let's just work in inches. Let's say you have an 8x8 eight eight hoop. Well, you can actually just type in 8x8, eight eight, but maybe you don't want to have it square and you want to do something like this. And we can get, uh, oops, I need to deselect that. And let's put um, 10 by 6. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, here's an example of an image that I was creating. I had these flowers and I was using some metallic thread, but notice the flowers have open areas. And I was stitching this on Silk Dupy Oni, and then I was going to trim very close to the line, and I actually made a pin to wear on my blazer that had steampunk designs. So you don't have to just make a square, you can make a rectangle. So we'll go back to making, um, let's just do a four by four square and I'll get rid of uh, maintain aspect ratio. Now, I've shown you that you can do inches or metric. We'll go back to metric. I've shown you maintain aspect ratio, but the fill type, you have stippling, and the higher the number, the further apart the stitches are. So there's an example. I didn't mean to click out of there. Let's go back again. Um, so the density, is actually let's just say 10 and you can see I've got less stipples or if I say 2 then I've got more so the lower the number the less space between the stitches the higher the number the more space so we have stipple which is pretty self-explanatory this is grayed out um, motif this motif is what I used on, let's see if I can find that image behind here. Motif is what I um, used in this section right here. Love, love, love the motifs. So let's explore this for a minute. You've got all kinds of different 
um, motifs. And here I have pattern size at 15. If I go to 20 and even 30, you can see what's happening here. Now, what I like about this is you can just keep going until you get it centered uh, how you want it. All right, you can see I'm getting, since it's a wizard, I've got a little more space here. So you can just, uh, you know, play around with it until you get what you want. So at this point, I can explore all of the different motifs that I want here for quilting. And I believe this is um, similar to the one that we used on our sample. And this motif right here, um, we do have this one stitched out. And that motif, here it is stitched on the back. Now some other items that we can um, explore. Let's go back to 15. So obviously that's going to take a little bit longer to stitch out in a 4x4 four four hoop. We also have offset. Now when I select offset, it's going to give me an offset line that's roughly a quarter inch away. So if you're using this for quilt block, that may be a great feature that would give you a seam allowance there. So if I deselect that, it goes back. Now we've also included a placement line and a tack down line. So if you were going to stitch this on fabric, like um, I have shown, um, well, I must have deleted that one, like the pin that I showed you, you wouldn't want a placement line and a tack down line. But what if you were going to be using this for a quilt block and you wanted to baste fabric and batting in the hoop. Let's go ahead and select OK and show you what this looks like in the screen. Now over in our sequence window, we have the placement line and let's change this to a different color so you can see it. We'll do lime green for all of these or let's just do black. So we have the placement and we'll do the slow redraw. And you have your placement line and you lay your fabric and your batting and it would tack it down. And then you go into your quilting stitches. Now, there you go. So you've got a placement line, you could tack down your batting and then your fabric separately. Let's go into another 3D. So I've shown you the stipple and the motif. Well, here's some really exciting things. You've got a line. Now the density here, I'm at six, and let's just show you what I'd be at 20. So this would be like ruled uh, pages. And we'll go back to six. So you can see all of the different options that you have here. Really love this. And I'm back online and I can just keep scrolling down. If I wanted cross hatching, um, I might want to do this at 10 or at 20. So if you want to pre quilt your fabric, you could embroider this first and then drop any embroidery design, filled stitches or applique on top of it. Now let's go to our curve. And let's show you what the curved feature looks like here. I think this picture is behind. And here is an example of the curved uh, line feature, which I think is really a great option. And that's what I also used on my Christmas stocking. So let's go back to six. And you can see we have this curve. And this is just great. We've got some curved, um, cross hatching and you've got some really cool distortion type things in here as well. So let's just play with this one and let's do an offset run and I'm going to select OK and 3D. Now again, you've got your placement line, you've got your quilting line and then I have my offset line and on this offset line I could change this um, when I saved it to something different, or this would be my seam allowance. So there you have it under create the 3D fabric texture tool. I'd love to see what you're doing with this, whether you're a quilter or an embroiderer. If you just need to embellish your fabric with quilting stitches or motif stitches 
or stipple or line or curved or wave stitches, this is where you're going to do it. Until next time, happy stitching.